All right, so in this video, I wanted to talk about the wheel strategy and why I think it's not that great. So first of all, what is the wheel strategy? Basically, it's selling a naked put or a cash secured put on a stock that you wouldn't mind owning. So let's look at the example of the ETF IWM. Let's say I want to sell a naked put at 144, for example. So I'll just change the strike here to 144 for expiration August 7. So this week on Friday, I could collect 50 cents per contract at a 144 strike. So as long as IWM stays above 144, come August 7, I win on this trade, I keep my premiums. If on the other hand, IWM drops below 144, come August 7, then I will get assigned the shares. If I did one contract, then I will get assigned 100 shares of IWM at $144. So that's $14,400. So I need to have enough buying power for $14,400 in my account. Whether it comes from margin or cash, I need to have enough buying power for that. So the idea of the wheel strategy is to sell naked puts or cash secured puts on your favorite stocks. And if you get assigned, well, then you end up owning the shares and then you switch it to covered calls. Because once you own the shares, you can then sell covered calls. So August 7 comes, IWM is trading below 144. I end up owning the shares at 144. And now for next week, August 14, I own the shares at 144, I can sell a call against it. And now the opposite happens. If the stock ends up above 144 come August 14, I'm going to lose my shares at 144. If it stays below 144, then I still own the shares and I can sell another call option the following week at the same strike of 144. The profit would be the premium collected from the put the first week and then the premium collected from the call the following week. Now, just to give you an idea what how much you can get from the call, I would choose the same expiration of August 7 and the stock right now is trading at 149. So let's choose a 149 strike. So you could get about $2 right now for the call. If you were to sell the at the money call, if you got assigned the shares, but you could also sell a higher strike if you want. So it depends what your goal is. If your goal is just to collect as much premium as possible, then you could sell the at the money strike. But if you want to keep the shares and you want to maximize capital appreciation, and you just want to collect some extra premiums, then maybe sell a an out of the money strike. So a higher strike like 153 or even 154. So that's the wheel strategy, starting with a naked put, selling a put. And then if you get assigned, then you own the shares and then you start selling covered calls against your shares. But what I think is better than doing that, than getting assigned and selling covered calls, if you start off with selling puts, is simply rolling the put. So for example, let's say you start off with a put August 7th and you chose the 144 strike and then you collected premiums. You collected 48 cents or 50 cents. And then at the end of the week, IWM is trading above below 144. So instead of getting assigned the shares, instead of letting yourself getting assigned the shares, what you could do on expiration day is roll your put and collect credit, collect the premium. So how do you roll and what kind of premium you could collect? So let's assume we sold the since IWM is trading at 150 or 149 right now. So let's assume I sold, let's assume last week I had sold the 150 put for this week. And it looks like it's going to get, it looks like it's going to be in the money and I'll be assigned the shares at 150 because right now it's at 149. So what would happen is that I would have to buy back the 150 put that I sold last week, for example. But what I could do is sell the next week's expiration. So August 14 at the same strike of 150. And you could see that if I do that, I can collect a credit of a dollar or a dollar nine. So instead of getting assigned the shares, I could just keep rolling the put for a credit. Now, I think this is better because if you're in a margin account, then you're not actually using the buying power. It's not coming out of your account. So you're not paying interest if you're borrowing money to buy the shares. Because if you're doing covered calls, you have to own 100 shares of the stock. So you're paying for it. But if you're doing a naked put or a cash secured put, you're not paying interest on the buying power that's being used. And you're still collecting credit. Now, let's imagine you had sold a naked put or a cash secured put at a 155 strike expiring August 7. And obviously, it's going to be in the money and you don't want to be assigned the shares at 155. So what's better is you could just roll the put again. So I buy back the 155 strike and I sell the August 14 same strike. And as you could see, I'm still collecting a credit of anything between 52 and 80 cents. So I could still be five points in the money and still collect the credit. 
Now let's see if I had sold the 160 strike. I could still do it for a credit, a much smaller credit of course, but I could still do it for a credit. Now the advantage of that is you can always do it for a credit. But if you take the shares and sell a covered call at the same strike, you might not get a good credit. So if I look at the call value of August 14 at a 160 strike, you're getting 23 cents. So it's supposed to be the a similar credit. If we look at the 170 strike, you'd be collecting a penny. But if we were rolling the naked put, you could see that I can probably get about three or four cents. The advantage that I see of actually taking, getting assigned the shares and doing covered calls instead is that if the stock pays a dividend, well, at least you'll get the dividend. Otherwise, just rolling the put does the exact same thing and you would collect the exact same credit, if not a little bit more, by just simply rolling the puts instead of getting assigned the shares and doing covered calls. And one cool thing with uh, sell, with rolling your puts is that you can actually roll your strike lower. So if your initial put got tested and you want your next put to be safer, you can actually bring it lower for a credit. Depends how far you are from the current market price. So let's say I had sold the 150 and it's now below, now the current market price is below my strike. So I can actually sell the next week, so August 14, and I could go to a 149 strike making the trade safer and still collect the credit. All right, let's see if I can go to 148. So I can go to 148 and still collect the credit. So I started off with a 150 put, it got breached. So instead of getting assigned the shares at 150 and then selling covered calls at a 150 strike, I could keep rolling my puts and even bringing my strike lower collecting less credit, but making the trade safer for the following week. Let's look at another example with the SPY because the SPY has expiration every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so we can get a better idea. So if we use today's expiration of August 3rd, let's say I had sold the 330 put. So you can see the 330 put is worth a dollar right now because the current market price is 329, so it makes sense. But now if I do nothing and SPY stays below 330, then I'm going to get assigned 100 shares of the SPY at $330. So that requires $33,000. And then I could sell call options at a 330 strike. But what's better, in my opinion, is just to keep rolling the put. So you buy back the 330 strike, and then you sell the following expiration. So you could sell the August 5th expiration. Keep the same strike if you want, and you could see that you would collect about $2. So a net credit of $1.17 because you're buying your old put back. And that's just in two days. If we go to August 7, you'd collect, you would collect about $2 just by rolling the put. And you can probably even bring your strike lower. So you could bring it to $3.29 and collect $1.55. You can bring it to $3.27 probably, still collect $0.82. Cents. You can bring it to $3.24 and collect $0.07 or $0.08. Cents. So maybe $3.25, you could collect $0.30. Cents. So you brought your put strike from $3.30 to $3.25, making it a bit safer or five points safer and you're still doing it for a credit. So I think in my opinion, this is better than the wheel strategy, which is getting assigned the shares and selling covered calls on it. So rolling is simply buying back the current expiration and selling the following week's expiration, either at the same strike or a lower strike on the put side. Now let's look at an example where let's say I was completely off. I sold the 340 put and now SPY is at 329. Could I still roll for a credit? So at the same strike, I can definitely still roll for a credit. So at 340, you could see that I could roll for a small credit here of 10 cents. So I would not be able to bring my strike lower, but that's because I'm way far. But if I maybe go to a further expiration, let's say, let's say I go to August 14 expiration and I take the 340 strike, so same strike, I can collect a credit of 40, 50 cents. So even when you're completely in the money, you can still collect a credit. But of course, the more in the money you are, the smaller the credit but it would be the exact same credit or, or higher than if you accepted the shares and sold covered calls at that strike. So why get assigned the shares when you can keep postponing the shares assignment by simply rolling the put and collecting a credit by rolling and postponing? All right, so just wanted to share my thoughts on the wheel strategy because I get questions asked about it a lot. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And like always, if you can open an account with Questrade to trade on the stock market, Use my referral link below to get $50 in free trades. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button, share with a friend, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.